ever wish you could see everything, like all at once? You know, across land, sea, and air. All from hundreds of kilometers away. Exactly. Well, that's the kind of power we're diving into today with Global Eye AEWNC. Not science fiction. No, it's a real system built by Saab, and uh, it's changed the game when it comes to, you know, defense and security. So, ready to uncover what makes Global Eye so special? Let's do it. I mean, how does it even work, and why should we care? I feel like these are all questions we need answers to. Well, one thing that's really incredible about Global Eye is, well, it's like having an entire fleet of surveillance aircraft, uh -huh. but all rolled into one. Ooh. Yeah. Think about it. You know, traditionally, you'd need separate planes for, say, keeping an eye on the ocean, tracking movement on the ground, and, of course, monitoring the airspace. Yeah. Okay. Global Eye yeah. does it all. So, wait. This one system can replace multiple aircraft. That's right. That sounds crazy efficient. <sighs> but how? What makes it such a, uh, what do they call it? A force multiplier. Yeah, force multiplier. So imagine like a coastal security scenario. Okay. With Global Eye, you can monitor shipping lanes for, say, smuggling mm -hmm. track vehicles along the coastline that look suspicious. At the same time. Yeah, and even keep an eye on the airspace for any potential threats. And you're doing all of that with just a single aircraft. So compared to like using multiple aircraft, you're saving a lot of resources, right? A massive amount in yeah. terms of resources. Yeah. And manpower, huge difference. That's a really good example. Yeah. Really puts it into perspective. And speaking of uh, amazing tech, can we talk about this Erie IER radar? Sure. Because I read that it can detect objects, okay, <laughs> as small as a periscope. Yeah from a submarine hundreds of kilometers away. That's right. How is that even possible? So the key here is something called ESI radar, active electronically scanned array. But think of it this way. Imagine you're, I don't know, searching for something in the dark. Okay. Now a traditional radar, that's like using a lantern. You're casting a wide light, but it's very diffused. But a ESA, that's like having a super powerful flashlight. Oh. You can focus that beam exactly where you need it. Okay. Making it much more sensitive and able to pick out even those tiny details, even at incredible distances. So Global Eye is like, I don't know, a high tech detective. Yeah. With a super powered magnifying glass. Exactly. Just scanning the world with yeah. incredible precision. That's a great way to put it. But it's not just the radar. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are other sensors too. Oh, absolutely. There's maritime radar. So that can spot, say, a jet ski yeah. zipping across the waves from miles away. Wow. Then you've got GMTI ground moving target indication okay that tracks vehicles and troops on the ground uh -huh. and even high resolution cameras that can identify very specific objects okay so we're talking about seeing everything yeah but then understanding what it's seeing that must be a ton of information it is and that's where the data fusion comes in that's one of the things that really sets global eye apart it's like imagine your brain taking in all this information from your eyes your ears your sense of touch combining it all together to give you a complete picture wow that's what global eye does pulling in data from all those different sensors to create a real-time multi-dimensional view of what's happening so it's not just about the seeing right it's about understanding exactly but is it just gathering information or is there more well remember we said global eye is like a mobile command center right yeah yeah so it's not just collecting data it's processing it analyzing it and then sharing it instantly huh. with decision makers on the ground at sea in the air so in a really tense situation, Global Eye could give people the information they need to make, like those split-second decisions. Exactly. Imagine, say, a naval commander tracking a potential threat as it's approaching their fleet. Global Eye can detect that threat, analyze its course, its speed, you know, even its potential capabilities, and it gives the commander the information they need to make the right call in real time. And that time advantage, that could be crucial. Well, right? Oh, absolutely. Crucial yeah. in a high stakes scenario. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And this brings us to something else you mentioned, joint operations. Yeah. So different branches of the military all working together. Right. How does Global Eye help make that run smoother? Well, you know, in modern military operations, you often have different branches working together, yep. the Navy, the Air Force, ground troops. Mm -hmm. Each of those branches might only have a limited view based on their own sensors, their own position. Right. So they each have a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. But nobody has the full picture. That's a good way to put it. And that's where Global Eye comes in because it gathers all those pieces, sensor data from each of the units, and assembles them 
into a single clear picture of the situation. And it's updated in real time. So now everyone involved is literally on the same page. So it's like giving everyone the same map. Yeah. But a map that's constantly updating with the latest intel. Precisely. Okay. And this shared awareness, that's what makes coordinated action possible. The naval commander sees what the Air Force is seeing. The ground troops know what the ship is tracking. Everyone's decisions are being informed by the same real-time data. Wow. It's like Global Eye becomes the central nervous system yeah. connecting all these different parts of the operation. So Global Eye is like the conductor of an orchestra, yeah. making sure all the instruments are playing together. I like that. That's a good one. So by providing that common operational picture, it allows different branches to communicate really seamlessly, and they can make decisions based on the same up-to-the-minute information, which leads to much smoother and more successful operations. It sounds like a real game-changer for defense and security. But we also talk about globalized potential beyond you know, the battlefield. Right. Like maritime surveillance, border control, even search and rescue. That's right. So... Its capabilities aren't limited to just the military. Think about monitoring vast stretches of coastline for illegal fishing or keeping an eye on borders to prevent, say, trafficking or coordinating search and rescue efforts after a natural disaster. All those things. Wow. So it really is like a guardian angel. Yeah. Watching over the world from above. And what's even more exciting is that we're really just beginning to explore the potential applications. Oh, really? As technology keeps evolving, I think we'll see GlobeLive being used in ways that you know, we haven't even thought of yet. This is already blowing my mind. I'm excited to learn more about all the, like, the technical details yeah. and the potential applications. Well, buckle up, because we're about to dive even deeper. We'll be exploring specifics about Globalize's impressive sensor suite okay. and how these 11-hour missions are even possible. We've only just scratched the surface of what Globalize can do, and it's already clear that this system is in a league of its own. Yeah. But let's you know, get into the nitty gritty. How does this thing actually work? I was reading in the sources that it operates at 35,000 feet. Yeah. And can detect threats over 458 kilometers away. That's right. That's a lot of ground to cover. It is. To put it in perspective, that's like if you could spot, I don't know, a tiny low-flying aircraft from a distance greater than the entire length of the Grand Canyon. Whoa. And, you know, all of this comes down to that massive radar antenna on the top. The one that they've nicknamed uh, the ski box, right? Yeah, it's hard to miss. So that's the heart of the operation. The Erie ER radar, mm -hmm. 10 meters long, just scanning the world from up high. But it's not just about the hardware, is it? No, it's not. I mean, there are people behind all this data yeah. making sense of it. Absolutely. Imagine being one of the operators inside Global Eye. Yep. You're not just looking at a radar screen. You're working in this state-of-the-art environment designed for peak performance. So think ergonomic workstations, advanced displays, all within this comfortable cabin. I mean, remember, these missions can last over 11 hours. That's a long time to be laser focused. So it makes sense that they, you know, prioritize the crew's well-being. But let's get back to the action. We talked about joint operations. Right. Different branches of the military working together. How does Global Eye make that smoother? Can you paint a picture? Yeah, so picture this. You've got a Navy ship patrolling the coast, okay? Okay. An Air Force squadron on a reconnaissance mission, and an Army unit that's deployed on land. Now, each of them has their own intelligence, but it's like each of them is holding a piece of a puzzle. And without the full picture, things could get messy fast. Exactly. And that's where Global Eye comes in. It gathers all those puzzle pieces, sensor data from each unit, and assembles it into a single clear picture of what's happening, updated in real time. Now, everyone involved is literally on the same page. So it's like Global Eye is giving everyone the same map. Yeah. But it's a map that's constantly updating with the latest intelligence. Precisely. And this shared awareness, that's what makes coordinated action possible. So the naval commander sees what the Air Force is seeing. The ground troops know what the ship is tracking. Wow. Everyone's decisions are informed by the same real-time data. Global Eye basically becomes the central nervous system, you know, yeah. connecting all these different parts of the operation. That's an incredible level of coordination. Yeah. Let's shift gears a bit. We touched on civilian applications. And honestly, that's what I'm most excited about. What are some real world examples of Global Eye's potential for, you know, doing good in the world? Okay. Well, imagine a massive earthquake hits a remote region. Global Eye could be there, you know, 
within hours. Really? Scanning the entire disaster zone, mapping out the damage, even identifying the areas that need immediate aid. It's like having a search and rescue team with x-ray vision. Wow, that can make a huge difference in getting help to the people who need it most. What other examples are there? Well, think about environmental protection. Global Eye could be used to track illegal fishing activity across, you know, vast stretches of ocean yeah. or to monitor deforestation happening deep within a rainforest. I mean, it's long range sensors and ability to stay airborne for hours on end makes it perfect for these kind of, you know, large scale monitoring tasks. So it really is like a guardian angel kind yeah. of watching over us from above. Right. But even with, you know, the best intentions, there's always the question of responsibility. Right. Powerful tools. They require careful handling. Right. What are some of the ethical concerns surrounding a system like Globeye? That's a really crucial question, and it's one we can't shy away from. Any technology capable of such, you know, extensive surveillance, it definitely raises concerns about privacy uh -huh. and the potential for misuse. Globeye can see a lot, mm -hmm. and that data needs to be handled responsibly. It's like that old saying, with great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. How do we ensure that Globeye is used for good and not for harm? Well, I think transparency is key. So there need to be very clear guidelines for how and when Global Eye can be used, you know, in both military and civilian contexts. And I think open communication about its capabilities, its limitations, and how the data is being used, all of that can help build trust and alleviate some of those concerns. So it's not just about the technology. Right. It's about the human element, about setting ethical boundaries and using that power responsibly. Exactly. And this conversation needs to be ongoing. I mean, as technology evolves, so do the ethical questions surrounding it. And it's our responsibility to keep asking those tough questions and to make sure these powerful tools are being used to, you know, better humanity. This discussion has given me a lot to think about, and I'm sure our listeners are feeling the same way. But we're not done yet. We've explored the present of Global Eye, but what about its future? That's where things get really interesting. In our final segment, we're going to delve into the trends that are shaping the future of airborne surveillance. So we'll talk about drones, AI, and more. And we'll discuss how Globeye might evolve within that landscape. So don't go anywhere. So we've seen how Globeye is already changing things, you know, right now. But what about the future? What's coming up next for airborne surveillance? Well, there are a few really major trends, you know, kind of shaping the future of how we monitor the world from above. And Global Eye is right there at the forefront. So we're seeing this huge demand for real time information. Uh -huh. The rise of, you know, drones, of course, yeah. and the growing influence of artificial intelligence. All of these are playing a huge role. OK, so let's break those down one by one. Yeah. You mentioned the demand for real time intel. Yeah. Why is that so important these days, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to security? Well, think about it. Threats these days, they can pop up, well, anywhere, anytime. Right. And that old way of gathering information, you know, analyzing it later, that just doesn't cut it. Decision makers, they need to see a clear picture of what's happening right now yeah. in order to respond effectively. So it's not just about seeing, it's about understanding the situation as it's developing. Right. And being able to make a decision you know, right away. In the moment. Exactly. And that's one of the, you know, key advantages Global Eye has because right. it's advanced sensors and data fusion capabilities. They provide that instant awareness, which gives commanders, first responders, you know, whoever the information they need to make the right call. Makes sense. Now, what about drones? It seems like they're everywhere. They are. How are they impacting airborne surveillance? Drones or, you know, unmanned aerial systems are really kind of shaking things up uh -huh. because they're versatile, relatively inexpensive. And of course, you know, you're not putting pilots at risk yeah. and they can be equipped with all sorts of sensors and they can operate in environments that, frankly, might be too dangerous for a traditional aircraft. So are drones going to make global eye, you know, obsolete? Not exactly, because while drones are great for certain tasks, they do have their limitations. They can't really match the range or the endurance or the payload capacity of a larger aircraft like Global Eye. Yeah. I yeah. mean, think of it this way. Drones are maybe like the scouts. OK. But Global Eye. That's the command center. It's providing the big picture view right. and coordinating the overall operation. So it's more of a collaboration. Yeah, more of a collaboration than a competition. Okay. And I think we're going to see more and more integration between those manned and unmanned systems. You know, imagine Global Eye acting as a mothership 
deploying drones for very specific tasks. Wow. It extends its reach, its flexibility even further. That makes a lot of sense. Now, artificial intelligence, how is that changing the game when it comes to understanding all this data? Well, AI is becoming essential for dealing with the just massive volume of information that these systems are generating. Imagine AI algorithms just sifting through mountains of sensor data in yeah. real time, flagging potential threats, you know, identifying patterns that, frankly, human analysts might miss. It's like having the super powered assistant no. working alongside the operators, helping them make faster and more informed decisions. So global AI could become even more powerful. Oh, absolutely. AI could take its capabilities to a whole other level, you know, mm -hmm. allowing it to detect threats that are even more subtle to maybe even predict problems before they even arise and to just provide much deeper insights to decision makers. That's incredible. But as we've talked about, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. How do we make sure that all of these advancements, especially with AI, are used ethically, mm. responsibly? That is the, you know, the million dollar question. Yeah. And as these technologies evolve, we have to start developing those clear guidelines, regulations and, you know, oversight mechanisms. Right. We need to have open discussions about the potential risks, how to protect privacy and just make sure these tools are being used for the right reasons. It's a challenge, but one we can't ignore. We can't. It's like, you know, we're writing the rule book for this whole new era of surveillance and we need to make sure that those rules reflect our values. Well said. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Global Eye, yeah, I want to encourage all of you listening to keep thinking about these issues. Right. Because the future of airborne surveillance, well, it's not set in stone. It's being shaped by all the choices that we make, you know, today. Mm -hmm. So stay informed, ask questions, and make your voice heard. Really well said. It's been a fascinating journey exploring this, you know, uh, this groundbreaking technology. And who knows what amazing developments are, you know, right around the corner. But one thing's for sure. The sky.